let me know if I touch my screen and it quits recording. That's your job. Because you can see down here if it's recording. Alright, so before we can talk about measuring angles, we need to look at the parts of an angle. So you're going to use a straight edge. I don't have the ability to use a straight edge on this program. <laughs> so, but you are. So your uh, student ID makes a perfect straight edge. You don't have to really measure anything. So I want you to draw that angle right there. And we're going to put arrows on the end. I'm going to put a point here, a point here, and a point here. I'm going to name this A, this B, and this C. And on top of that, we're going to put a 1 in here. Oh, my volume works now. That's awesome. <laughs> the little things in life that make a teacher happy. All right, so here is your angle. Note that this angle is made up of what? What things did you learn day two of school that this is right here? What's that? A ray. And so the sides of the angles are made up of two rays. This right here is called the vertex. So let's get a pretty color. So right here, uh, point P is called the vertex. That's the most important point on your angle. Naming your angle centers around that vertex. And so we've got the vertex. And then anything that is in between these two rays is the interior of your angle. And anything outside is the exterior. So it's kind of like this is a fence in your yard. Inside your yard, that's the interior. <clears throat> and outside that fence would be the outside of your yard. Because they're going to describe pictures to you using the words interior and exterior. And you've got to understand what they mean by that. And so we'll get to that in a minute. But we're going to name this angle. To name an angle, you can name it two different ways. You can name it with three letters, and you can see that I've got three points here, with the vertex 100% of the time in the center. Or if you happen to see, now not, ang not all angles will have this number right there on the interior near the vertex, but if it does, you can name it by its number. So this angle can be named actually three different ways. I can name it A, B, C, and it's going to look like this. You're going to use a little angle marker. So it's going to look like a, a squished L with an arc through it. If you don't put the arc through that angle measure, you're going to confuse it with an L. And we use a lot of letters in geometry, so it's to your benefit if you put the little arc in there. Um, so we can name it angle ABC, or we can name it angle, you can go backwards, and can't we do CBA? The only stipulation is the vertex has to be in the center. And only if they put a number in there could you name this angle 1. So those are your three ways to name that angle. No other choices. So then I'm going to give you an angle, and I want you to name... I'm going to, I'm going to give you a picture that has two angles, and I want you to name... both angles all three ways. So here's example one. So name both angles all three ways. And here's your picture. So you're using a straight edge. I can't. So I want you to name angle one all three ways, and I want you to name angle two all three ways.
All right, so um, obviously one way to name angle one, I'm gonna put angle one down here, would be angle one, right? So what's another way? Shout it out. ABD. Angle A, B, D. B has to be in the middle. What's the third way? DBA. And then, obviously you can name angle two as angle two. So what's the second way? DBC. And angle C, B, D. So that was tough, right? You wish that your assignment was just like that. Everything. I'll have it done in seconds. Oh, unfortunately, no. All right, so then we're going to do a little review on how to classify an angle. So this should be a review for middle school, hopefully. There are four ways that we can classify an angle. So I could, again, use a straight edge, I can't. So I can have an angle that looks like this. Or I can have an angle that looks like this. So what's the difference between these two angles? What is that angle called versus this one? Oh, wait a minute. Hold that thought. <coughs> I'm taking that off. And... Oh, really? <laughs> Hold on. Let me write these again. You think about that while I write them again. I didn't want to write that one angle that way. Okay, so we have one angle that looks like this versus one angle that looks like this. Right, so this one's acute and that one's obtuse. So we have an acute angle and we have an obtuse angle. You can think of acute angles, you know, acute looks like a cute little puppy. What do you think about a cute little puppy? They're cute and small, right? Obtuse sounds like obese. Obese means you're big, right? So kind of try to remember it that way. And then these angles, let's assume that X is the measure of the angle. For an acute angle, it must be less than 90 degrees, but greater than zero. It had to be between zero and 90. Versus an obtuse angle, X being the measure again, it has to be less than 180 degrees, but greater than 90. So what if an angle is exactly 90 degrees? What's it called? A right angle. A right angle is not an acute angle, and it is not an obtuse angle. It's a right angle, okay? So I could have a right angle, and the right angle is gonna look like this, and you're gonna put this little box marker here to show that it's 90 degrees. I guess I should put x equals 90. What is an angle called if it's exactly 180 degrees? It is a line, but what's a line called? A line is a line is not crooked, it's straight. That's the name of the angle. So, an angle that's 180 degrees is called a straight angle. and it would look just like a line. And x is 180 degrees. So the angle measure of a straight line is 180 degrees. These are things that you need to know because you're, it's assumed that you're gonna make those conclusions when you do some of your problems. So for instance, <clears throat> let's do example two. So I'm going to draw a picture, and you're going to copy it, best of your ability.
<laughs> With a straight edge, of course you are, right? Unlike mine. so much better when I use a straight edge. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then I've got some questions off here to the side I want you to answer. So those are the angles that we're going to find based upon the picture. So copy the picture and wait to find the angle measures so we can chat. So you've entered the realm of being a math detective. So they're going to give you some information, and you have to look at the information given and make some conclusions based upon things that you know, in this case, about angles. Does anybody have any questions about what I wrote? Like that letter to the right is a G <laughs> with the F and the H, right? That's a G. Hard to tell, but sure. Anybody else not be able to read something? Pretty good. We're going to find the measures of those angles, <clears throat> but bear in mind that you've got some information that they gave you. So right here, they gave you, see notice this arc mark? We use arc marks now instead of tick marks to show uh, an angle's measure. So this is an arc mark right here, and they're telling you that this angle here, which is called what? What is it? Acute. Yes, it's acute, but what, how do you name it? ABC, angle ABC, right? They're saying it's 70 degrees, and you're right, it's acute. So if this is 70 degrees, can't you find this angle right here? Right? Because together, think of the, uh, well, we haven't done the angle addition postulate that yet, but together, what should these angles add up to? In other words, what's angle ABD? 180, it's a straight angle. So these two angles here should add up to 180 degrees, right? So you can find this angle here by subtracting 70 from 180. What is this marker right here telling you? That that's a right angle, it's 90 degrees. So what do you know about this angle here? 90, what do you know about this? If that's 90, this is also 90, right? And what about this? 90. So you've discovered something today. Anytime you have two lines that are intersecting, you will always have four right angles. You'll have a, a theorem or postulate about that later, but today you've already discovered it. So let's go ahead and find angle ABC. That was tough, wasn't it? Didn't they give it to you? Okay, so let's write that in there. 70 degrees. And then I want you to find CBD. What's the measure of CBD? Yeah, so it's 180 degrees minus the 70, right? 
And so you do indeed get 110 degrees. What about CFG? Uh, let's follow from C to F all the way to G. So you're tracing it. C to F to G. What's that going to be? That's going to be 90 because that one was 90, right? So this one is 90 degrees. And then the last one is CFH. So we're going to go from C to F to H. C to F to H. What kind of angle am I tracing? A straight angle, which is 180 degrees. So that was tough, right? So far, so good. All right, so let's talk about the angle addition postulate. So yesterday we did the segment addition postulate. The angle addition postulate is identical, only we're talking about angles. So if the segment addition postulate was the two smaller pieces of a segment add up to a larger piece, the angle addition postulate is going to say the two smaller angles add up to a bigger angle. Just like you had here, the two smaller angles are adding up to the bigger angle. That's the segment addition postulate right there. 70 plus 110 makes what? 180. There's your angle addition postulate. You just used it. So let's officially um, write. So angle addition postulate. So again, we're going to write the words, which will sound like gobbledygook until we write a picture to go with it. So if point B is in the interior, of angle AOC, then, and then this is new notation for you, the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC is exactly equal to the measure of angle AOC. <coughs> so the new notation, this little M, So remember yesterday when we were looking at the measure of segments, we had two letters with nothing above and nothing in the front. Well, when we're talking about the measure of an angle, we're just going to put this little M in front. So we're going to draw a picture to go with this. So I'm choosing to draw an acute angle. What's the vertex of this angle, the big angle, AOC? What's the vertex? O. So I know that this point right here is O. So it doesn't matter where I put A and C, so long as O is at the vertex. So there's that big angle, AOC. And they say something very important. They say that... If point B is in the interior of this angle, well, here's the angle. The interior, remember, is inside here. So I just have to put point B anywhere inside here, and that's what we're going to do. Put, I'm going to choose to put point B here, and then I'm going to connect O to B with a ray. So now you can see we have two smaller angles. Here's angle here, and here's an angle here. So I'm going to name this angle 1 and this angle 2, just so you can see. We can use arc marks as well. But there you can see the two smaller angles here should add up to give you this whole bigger angle. So here's AOB, that's the smaller angle here. And here's BOC, the other small angle. 
together if you add the, those values. So let's say that, I don't know, we had 20 degrees here and 40 degrees here. That's a four, shocking. So what does the whole big angle add up to? Yeah, the angle from here to here would add to 60 degrees. The two smaller would add up to that bigger angle, right? There's your angle addition postulate. Now sometimes they're not going to tell you what the bigger angle is because it's going to be a right angle or a straight angle. And you have to be able to make that connection and go, oh yeah, I know what that angle measure is. And so this is the important part right here is this equation to set that up with any picture that you have two smaller angles made out of a bigger angle. All right, so let's look at a couple of problems. So example three. I think I'll do a new. So for example three, you were told that angle DEF is a straight angle. What do you know about straight angles? DEF is a straight angle. What do you know about straight angles? They form a line and they're 180 degrees, right? Those are your conclusions. The minute you start hearing this stuff, you train your brain to start thinking conclusions. Uh, straight angle, oh, I know, 180 and it's a straight line because that's going to help you envision and see what you have to do. All right, so then the question is, What is the measure of angle DEC and the measure of angle CEF? So let's draw the picture. And this is a very common picture. And they're also going to give you So that's all the information you have. You know that DEF is a straight angle, and then you look at your picture, and they've given you even more information. So not only is this a straight angle, knowing that that's 180 degrees, what kind of an angle is this? Describe it. Obtuse. What kind of angle is this? Acute. And so together, they should add up to what? 180. There's, there's the hint. So step one, we're going to use the segment or a segment. We're going to use the angle addition postulate just to set up our equation. So in general, we're going to write the angle addition postulate. What's one of the smaller angles? Name one of the smaller angles. CEF. So angle CEF plus name the other smaller angle. CED. So angle CED exactly equals what angle? DEF, that straight angle. So get in the habit of writing that general statement using the angle addition postulate, and then from there, all you have to do is substitute in the, for the values that you know. If you end up with two unknowns, like you don't know what to do with two of them, then that must mean that there is a conclusion you were supposed to have made that perhaps you forgot to make. So step two, we're going to substitute in the values that we know. So I know that CEF is 2x plus 10, based upon the picture. 
and we know that CED is 11x minus 12, again based on the picture. And then based upon our big and powerful brain, you knew that DEF was what? 180 degrees. So that's a conclusion that you made on your own. Because it's not enough to know that a straight angle a, makes a line. You have to know that it's 180 degrees. Then from here, it's just all algebra. So from here, aren't you going to collect like terms? So what's 2x and 11x? 13x. And then you're going to collect 10 and negative 12. What does that give you? Negative 2 equals 180. And then finish solving from there. Here's shorthand division. How many times does 13 go into 18? Once. So we put a 1 down here. And then um, what's left over? How many is left over? 18 minus 13. 5. So you put the little 5 right here next to the 2. So then how many times does 13 go into 52? If you don't know, just start multiplying 3 by something. 4. So and uh, thir 13 times 4 is 52, so there's no remainder. So x is 14, does that answer the question? No. So step 3 is to answer that question. Are we okay? Did anybody have issues with the solving? Alright. So step 3, what do they want you to answer? You have to find the angle measures, DEC and CEF. So we're going to say that angle, whoops, I don't want that color. So we have angle CE, or we'll do DEC, is equal to 11x minus 12. So that's equal to 11, and then our x is 14. Here's a great way to multiply by 11. So we're taking 14 and multiplying it by 11, right? So take the 14 and split it apart, because that's what you're multiplying by 11. And then take the 1 and the 4 and add it together. What do you get? 5. Guess what 11 times 14 is? 154. So if you're multiplying whatever number you're multiplying by 11, split it apart, and then take those two, add them together, and put it in the middle. It's a beautiful thing. And then minus 12, what does that give you? So angle DEC is equal to 142 degrees. Does that seem reasonable for the picture? What kind of an angle is DEC? Obtuse, and that's an obtuse measurement, right? So there's one. And then um, angle CEF. That's equal to 2x plus 10 which we're going to do 2 times 14. What's 2 times 14? So 28 plus 10. So we get 38 degrees. Does that seem reasonable for that angle? Yep, because it's an acute angle. How could I check it? How could you check it? What do those add up to? they do add up to 180 degrees. Question? You could, but what if you, she asked, could I subtract 142 from 180? You could, assuming you calculated that correctly. And there's the problem. What if you didn't calculate that correctly, you made a math error? Then you're going to get that one wrong too. So if I were you, I would calculate both of them and then check by adding them together so that if you made a calculation error, you're going to catch it. All right, any other questions on that? Okay. Now, the only thing that could be different 
um, would be maybe this would have been two angles that added up to a right angle. Or maybe there are two angles that add up to an acute angle and it's not 90 or 180 degrees. Your best bet is to set up this equation, stop packing up while I'm talking, to set up this equation um, and then plug in what you know. Sometimes they're going to give you three uh, expressions. And you have to put an expression here, here, and here, and solve all that algebra. So you're going to have some questions tonight. Um, so make sure that you finish both of those homework pieces um, and have them ready tomorrow to go.